Savage Shamans, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sumet Chatterjee from the Flow Zone Academy, and I'm a flow state specialist, which means that I help you feel your best and perform your best. I am right here in Costa Rica, San Jose. Last night was wild. Uh, I got here last night actually, and we already made some attunements and we started shape shifting as shamans and we started natural grounding. Uh, did a lot of just attunement work, healing work, astrology, exploration, deep conversations, you know, all that good stuff, okay? And it was powerful, bro. Let me just wait for this plane to get past. So how do you get the Riz of a Tantric God? That's the title of this video. You clicked on it for a reason. I'm gonna get right into the meat and potatoes of it all, okay? And help you actually access these gifts and this, this true ascension according to uh, the understandings that we have in Primal Sutra, okay? So essentially, this is my own perspective. You can take it however you want it, but my understanding is Tantra is a way of life. It is not only just practices or rituals or things like this, and a lot of people might be like, is it a religion? Is it connected to Hinduism? Is it, you know? Let's forget all of that and let's look at Tantra as an exploration of two individuals and their energies and also weaving and expanding uh, I think Tantra goes beyond sex, okay? A lot of people just think, oh yeah, it's just good sex, you know? Which is great, which is valid, which is fine, but you can also use Tantra for social charisma, which is what I've noticed, okay? And uh, I'm starting to notice it here more. As I start shedding and purging different layers, I mean, I've already changed within a day. I don't know how that's possible, but I believe that well, again, I set the intention, cleared it, and then move on, right? It's very, very powerful when you can reach these understandings, these revelations, because you almost skip past timelines when you start doing this kind of spiritual work, right? And what I mean by that is you skip yourself years of, like, hardship or, like, you know, of course it's going to be hard. I mean, life is hard in general, Right? It's not meant to be easy breezy, but I think the suffering, we add more suffering on top of the suffering that already exists using our man mentality right, and our mindset and so forth. So the consciousness of a shaman or a tantrika or a tantric coach or whatever, like a lot of neo-tantra nowadays, they just, they say and do whatever, right? I think to be able to tap into tantra, you do need a yoga practice, a very good one, in fact. And uh, no, I'm not saying that it's only like this very sacred elite state that is only reserved to, you know, masters and gurus and, you know, monks and yogis and, and people who we've segregated and said, oh, those are the spiritual people, right? I'm saying let's embody those qualities and bring it here in the present because you are the medicine man or the medicine woman listening to this because you are your own healer. You choose to heal yourself by watching these videos, do you not? And so that is a very, very powerful example of this. I hope you guys can hear me, by the way. I know there's uh, a lot of wind and so forth, but yeah. I'm actually going to teach you guys a very easy practice that you can do. Now, as a shaman or a person who has this riz, you have to be able to adapt and improvise in any situation, okay? Because the Tantra isn't only reserved to the yoga mat or the bedroom or, you know, the boardroom or whatever you're using it for. It's not only that. It's almost like you are Tantric in nature. Like, I, I believe that string theory, if you've ever heard of string theory, you look at it as almost like a loom or weaving, right? Tantric is looming or weaving. So it's about integration, right? It's about taking different crafts and creating a new energy out of that. So at the functioning end of two different human beings, right? Which function as a battery pack almost, right? So the male penis energy is a positive charge. Um, a woman's vagina is a negative charge, right? And so it's like a battery. It's used to absorb and reabsorb. So at, if you as a man you are on semen retention. You don't necessarily need to ejaculate all the time. You can have those tantric orgasms that can last for hours, actually. You can have sex for hours and you can have sex and extend it over time because what you're doing is you're shooting energy into the other person and they're shooting the energy back into you, okay? So it's like this cycle, okay? 
Now, how that's done, you can join the Adepts program. There's many ways, you know, that you can learn about this, but I'm not going to share all the, you know, tech here on this video. But what I get you to explore is look up something called the microcosmic orbit. Okay, look up the microcosmic orbit because that's going to help you give you an example of this. What tends to happen is if you put your tongue on the roof of your mouth, okay, and you'll notice this, if you put your tongue on the roof of your mouth, your energy is going to cycle like your aura energy going like this. It, just Google image microcosmic orbit, you'll find it, what I'm talking about. But basically you, that in breath and out breath, right? As you use that with the tongue at the top of the palate, it does something very interesting to you. And I want you to just observe what it's doing to you, okay? So you could be in a venue, you could be relaxing, right? And a few shifts can get you into a very tantric, a more of a receptive mode, okay? More uh, engaged, more present. You want to also explore your attachments in tantra a lot. I think that's very, very helpful. But this is mainly a guide of like, you know, how you as a neo shaman can deal with this in the social realm, okay? So let's say you're sitting like this, okay? Now, number one, if you are crossing your legs in any way, any sense of the word, it is going to impact you. Now, you want your knees to be lower. So you want your knees to remain lower okay, than your upper body. One, you want your knees to actually be lower than your hips when you sit down, okay? that corrects the posture, it makes you very tall, it straightens the spine, the cerebral spinal fluid can flow, and you have more energy, okay? If you're hunched over like this at a night, you're gonna get like neck pain, back pain, stuff like that, that showing up, because this is the battlefield, right, between mind and body. The neck is the battlefield between mind and body, and you might be working on a laptop or a phone and you might have a lot of neck things. Do neck exercises, okay? A lot of neck exercises to actually strengthen this space, okay? Because you are going to get down. This is where the downloads are coming through, okay? It's the brain, okay? Through this area. This is like the neck and the... Again, this connects with our speech too, right? And our breath also connects with our vocals and how we communicate, okay? So... <clears throat> A few easy tweaks, like not holding your drink like this, but just opening it up, expansive. You wanna think of your energy as expansive. So very easy way that you can think of this is you imagine that And again, this is very quick to do, but if you wanna tap into, if you're feeling too scattered in the environment, you just go like this. It's like you're stretching, but it's gonna be a quick recalibration for you, okay? It's gonna be very, very powerful for you. And once you recognize that you can do so many things like this, okay? It doesn't have to be one way, but you can improvise and adapt all of these techniques. For instance, if you're holding a lot of tension in the shoulders, you simply do this. Okay? very easy you just kind of store all the tension tension store it store it store it and then you let go okay this letting go protocol is going to be very very key and very very important okay and um yeah this is a great little villa yeah this is a great little villa guys it's gonna be awesome um Your creativity as a shaman is everything, okay? Your creativity as a shaman is everything, hands down. Because you are with you 24 seven. When are you not with you, okay? You are with you all the time, most of the time, okay? So you gotta understand this. Now, somebody else's energy could be affecting you, but this is where our art form called pleasure alchemy comes in, okay? Pleasure alchemy is all about taking the essence of it and then transmuting it towards something. This is why also we practice something called Shakti meditation or natural grounding. I don't know if you've heard of that. Shout out Rio and Kati, who has that tech and we've modified it according to our path we're being primarily. And we also amplify it 
using the different information and wisdom that we know, okay? I believe every man and woman has deities from different... I believe that every man and every woman on this planet has a collection of deities that they truly resonate with. And my belief is it starts in the mind, okay? It starts in your mind. The search starts in your mind because it shows up in your dreams and it shows up in your subconscious. So your mind actually creates the possibilities for your shamanism and different things, okay? So if you can get your spirit and your mind on the same side, you're gonna get synchronicities like anything, okay? That's what I'm experiencing right now, okay? There's two sound files that we particularly use here in this path working. It's like subliminals mixed with a lot of the tech. And we're listening to it and we're getting these huge aha moments, these breakthroughs, right? And then we're listening to it, we're getting these huge aha moments and breakthroughs on the spot. And it's like, man, if only we could, if only we could carry this feeling alive forever. Well, why can't you, okay? What if your tantric nature was like, just like, if you imagined your body, right, like a bundle of ropes, okay, you felt tighter on certain ends, you just need to loosen that, just loosen the ropes, right? You're squeezing too tight, so it's creating a contraction, and a contraction in the physical body, or a tension, or a pain in the physical body, creates like a huge reservoir of energy, right? It basically clusters all the emotions together and traps it in the physical body, okay? So what you wanna be doing is you wanna give yourself a muscle memory and a bio memory. So if you get into physical practices, okay, like yoga, meditation, getting yourself into altered or trance-like states, I highly recommend every single shaman to start laughing. Okay, go to comedy shows, get into your laughter. Laughter as a shaman is your, probably one of your few really, really healing modalities that will stop you from becoming insane, okay? It will literally stop your insanity. If you are not laughing at all through this journey and it's not fun for you and you're terrified and you're like, oh my gosh, I got visited by a phantom and you're running around scared, you're not on this path working protected and you haven't done this wisely. You haven't invested in any kind of spiritual mentorship or people who know about this, right? I know about this, I've trained in this. My understanding is this is something that anybody can learn, okay? Automatic speaking, channeling these beings is something that anybody can learn. And in fact, you know, you take any individual, right? Let's say the person watching right now, take you. Let's take you. Let's take a, a, a different concept of you. Now let's take you and let's take a celebrity or a myth or a cartoon or a, something, right? Where you want to aspire to merge with that essence or that frequency. Let's say that you as a man would like to be Batman. Okay. Now, one, it would be one thing of you wearing the Batman outfit, right, in your visualization, but it would also be another thing to symbolize Batman and place it within your heart. You see? Like, how big of an attunement would that give you? Because not only is it symbolic, it's almost like you created a bat sigil for yourself that's very personalized to you. Now you can actually crystallize that abstract nature in your physical body and this is going layers layers deeper okay because number one it has to match your archetype that you are playing in this game called life now you are a multi-dimensional being so you're allowed to have as many archetypes as you want and which is why i respect padma sambhava so much because he was he embodies all the four qualities of the male archetypes right king warrior magician lover and um But yeah, I will be basically sitting like this, okay? Let me just show you some of the tweaks. So, number one, this. These are a couple of things that you can do, okay? Deep inhale, hold. Deep exhale, kind of let your body ground itself. And imagine the energy almost like a you're taking the chi and you're bringing it down into the lower body, okay, to the lower third. And um, very, very important to also wiggle your toes, stomp your feet to the music, okay? 
get yourself in your feet, get yourself in your toes, okay? A lot of shamans, they're in their mind, but the groundedness really helps them connect all of their chakra points and it just gives them the skill set. That's why we're here on this island mainly to work on the grounding and the sacral so and open our hearts so that we have that nice channel, you know, opening up for us. And we can remain in that tantric kind of zone, okay? You gotta know your body's physical limit. So if you've never pushed yourself at the brink of exhaustion or if you've never really done a workout where you're really sweating or you haven't taken any mood altering substances or you know entheogens or anything in your life like if you have not done any experimentation in your life you are missing out on your shamanism okay number one you can argue with me and be like oh yeah but you know there are shamans who just access it all the time i agree with you like i believe a mystic and a magician should be able to access their gift 24 7 on command it shouldn't be this weird thing where they're just like you know hey there guys you know they're not putting on this mirage i think spirituality 2.0 is authenticity speaking to this uh, with wade our top student here uh, elite student who's, who's chosen to come to the priest beast awakens event authenticity is such a powerful essence okay of how you can be yourself but not only be yourself i think authenticity is being the best self right and slowly leaning into that best self and we can't predict that either like we can create the framework for it and have intentions for it but it's going to happen the way that it's going to happen okay but you'll realize like you lose a sense of time as you're on this process okay you do lose a sense of time time becomes less of an obstacle for you and more of an ally as you're on this journey because you reach those pockets of timelessness that give you that understanding that I've lived a full, rich, you know, ecstatic day. And hey, if I can end that in a tantric embrace, then by all means, okay? I think a lot of people are just very opposed to these things or very, you know, against these topics. They think they're too transgressive or too taboo or, you know, they, they kind of paint an image about it. But I think it's a very, very sacred act, a sacred art form to understand this too. Uh, especially as I've been learning more of the guru yoga understanding where you become the guru, you become, you merge with the guru in a sense and you start, this is a tantric Vajrayana Buddhism, okay, that I'm bringing from. But basically you're merging with that being and that being and you become inseparable uh, almost you blend together so you can't tell whether you are you or the being is the being which is very similar to when you're channeling actually you know so I actually got this tech from Tantric Vajrayana Buddhism applying this tech through the framework of channeling and, and science and gamma waves and we figured out a way to systematize this and really help you know people access these gifts so it's absolutely fantastic man and I think that once we can use these shamanistic powers, not just for to go in our inner world and stay in a cave, but to impact the world, right? You're getting impacted by my energy right now in this video. We're people, man. We get impacted by energies. You see what I'm saying? Like, if you don't work on your energy, how will other people feel your energy? How are they going to be so comfortable around you or so open or so you know, blissful? and achieve you know transcendental states around you if you are not that yourself if you do not carry that frequency within yourself already you see so you have to actually create this shit you have to wake up in the morning and be like yo i'm blissful man i'm great i feel fantastic in fact people are bound to respect me because i respect myself okay you start saying any what i call these are channeled affirmations so channeled affirmations are very very different than regular affirmations regular affirmations are very much in the mind okay if you're overthinking it you're thinking about it too hard okay like oh yeah i'm confident channeled affirmations is you getting into an ecstatic rhythm and state and almost giving yourself like a monologue like a pep talk okay and you just allow yourself to say it without a filter okay i'm going to give you guys an example this is very very powerful okay here we go guys grace okay let's try grace I feel as graceful and as light as a feather. Everything that comes my way is meant to be. 
I unfold all of the synchronicities of my day into my real life as I embrace every single monumental cosmic adventure that comes my way. I understand that my graciousness and gratitude just oozes out of my veins, just oozes out of my aura. The grace allows me to expand my consciousness as I look towards the horizon. I embrace the grace that is available to me through the nature of Costa Rica, through the understanding and the visceral energy going into my solar plexus, engaging the fire within, allowing myself to feel the water's grace with my fire essence. As we merge, and look, already there's a little bug on my hand, okay? <laughs> so, symbolic, okay? Any kind of bug or bee or like these have meanings, guys, okay? Like there's a butterfly right here symbolizing, you know, transformation. So all of these beings, right? As a shaman, you're gonna notice there's a dog coming and sitting next to you, okay? Or a random like parakeet just coming and sitting on your shoulder or like these little shamanistic moments are gonna happen. And you can't be afraid of that. You can't like push that away because that means that you're also pushing away your gifts. Okay, and I'll, I've seen a lot of shamans do this. They push away their powers and gifts by discrediting themselves, by staying in the logical mind and being too rational about it. So much so that they can't see beyond. Okay, there's a world beyond, my friends. And you got to tap into that world of the beyond. You can't just limit yourself to this physical realm only. Okay, yes, this physical realm is great. And don't get me wrong. I like making money. I like, you know doing things i like having the adventure and the freedom but there is a such a beautiful experience that's happening in your internal world that you might not be exercising and tapping into okay but it all comes down to the subconscious mind and really being able to impact it through that and i think the manifestation stuff will really start to make sense for you as you embody this frequency more so let me show you some quick little attunements, okay, Madrasana, okay, like this, very easy, okay, very easy. Next is the boat pose, so these are all exercises that help you with your sexuality, okay. The boat pose is great for like, if you're struggling with erections, stuff like that, it's really great for that. Another great one for that, to awaken your sexual energy, is Pai Dao Lai Jin, okay. So it's something like this. Let me just show you. It would basically like go like this. Two, three. So what I'm doing here is, right, I'm placing my legs like this. Both one side, other side. One side, other side. One side, other side. Now you can do some Hindu push-ups as well. Hindu push-ups are great, man. If you can do many of these, They're fantastic. Kalari Sutra. Okay. I like to combine it with different moves. Okay, frog jumps. Okay. A little bit of stretching left and right is always great. Again, I told you this one. This is a very powerful one. It's for brain gym. You stay concentrated. The Wayne Cook posture, I teach a lot of my clients too. Then, of course, this is a very powerful one. You do the back bridge. Okay. Okay. You want to release that lower back. Okay. Because the lower back holds a lot of sexual frustration and tension okay especially if you're on semen retention and so forth you're gonna get a lot of that there the rest of these exercises actually i'm gonna leave for the adepts program if you are interested in more stuff like this if you're interested in spirituality and accessing the flow state through different ways and different protocols then reach out to me man. uh i will be back in kolkata soon and we can plan something out then okay
right now i'm focused on my evolution here and i'm gonna come back and be ready to serve on a whole different level guys trust me on that this trip was definitely needed and it's going to continue to surprise me with awe okay let's get it today upward spiral gang stay legendary may you never be the same again we're all gonna make it let's win us